Hello, my name is Karen, Karen Vasquez, and I am here with Arvi Kashal, and I'm going to be doing a little quick interview with her to get some more information out of College Prep Consultants and herself. So Arvi, my first question for you is, what got you into the education business? Well, I've been in education for over 30 years. I was a, a instructor for eighth grade at Cardin School of Fresno, and then I've also served on the board. I've taught second grade. Um, just working with kids was really important. Um, and then continued to pursue education and got my bachelor's and master's at uh, Fresno Pacific University in counseling. And then um, interned in high schools and realized I really love working with high school students and seeing their potential was really important. Um, so then I started College Prep Consultants where I could work with students and families and uh, help them in the application process. Very nice. So you have College Prep Consultants, but how would you say it's evolved since you created it? Wow. Well, um, when we first started, uh, I didn't have an office. I uh, would visit families um, at Starbucks, yay Starbucks, and um, would go in to their homes and um, conduct meetings that way. And it was really wonderful too. Parents were very welcoming. Um, and it was a, a personal touch. And then um, we've evolved where we have a team of counselors and ACT, SAT instructors, as well as um, uh, career assessment counselors and um, liaisons between high schools and college prep and we have office manager and we have um, a whole team that now works with students and families. So as a counselor you must get a lot of students from different backgrounds and different parents so when a complaint comes up because you make a promise to make satisfaction how do you handle that? Uh, I think listening to the parents and seeing the issue uh, it's very important because the students Everybody wants to see them succeed. Um, the parents want to see them succeed. We want to see them succeed. And so, first of all, the most important thing is knowing that the focus is the student and listening to their concerns and then addressing them. And most times it's, it's the expectations that the parents have and also maybe the student has on himself and knowing what the potential is. When we, when we see these students, we really see what they're capable of, and sometimes they don't see it. Um, the parent sees what they're capable of as well, and sometimes the parents are pushing the student to be at their highest potential, but you know, that parent-student uh, gap, or you know, sometimes my own children don't listen to me sometimes, and I'm an expert at what I do. Uh, so just kind of bridging the gap is important. Um, so listening is very important and then addressing each issue. Would you be able to give us a little rundown or a basic summary on what College Prep Consultants consist of, what you offer, what we offer? Uh, what we do is we get students from all different um, age groups, ninth graders, uh, 10th, 11th, um, Senior Express, they're in their, in their 12th grade and then sometimes we have students that want to start early, like sixth grade or seventh grade. So once we get the student, we create this roadmap of um, all the things that they already have done. So we have to assess them first and then figure out their strengths and weaknesses in one of the tests, ACT or SAT, and then um, get an idea of what kind of colleges they're thinking about. And then based on the idea of where they want to go, we then develop a, uh, a thoroughly researched uh, Excel sheet that has their goals that they need to meet, the, the scores of the ACT that they have to get, how high should they continue to keep their yeah. GPA up. Um, if there's interviews, then we want to prepare them for those interviews. Um, and then just making sure they have community service. And then we align, we specialize it with their specific major. So if it's medicine, we want to make sure they have enough shadowing, we want to make sure that uh, they have enough internships or they've done programs at other colleges and universities. Just exposing the student to that field is also very important. 
What would you say is your biggest satisfaction from students or the company as a whole? Oh, the best part is that when we've put all these hours into the student and the family and, and the student has worked very hard is when we get those uh, text messages and emails and letters of acceptance and the student is just very happy and thrilled that all that hard work paid off. Um, when the mother calls and says, RV, thank you for everything, and she's crying on the phone, and I'm crying on the phone, um, because I'm so happy for that student yeah. that, that you know all their work uh, paid off, and the student is going to now be at the school that they can, you know, it's the next stage of, of, of life that they're going to now pursue. You mentioned earlier that you started College Prep Consultants as a way to, to help the students, but would you be able to give us a better understanding of your whole basis for um, creating the company? Well, uh, when I first started, I was a mother with a daughter entering college, and so I went through that process so I understand what parents feel, uh, the stress that they feel, the overwhelming of the admissions process. Um, and then I went through this not only learning the business myself, but but how frustrating it is sometimes. Even if we have parents that have gone through the education system here in the U.S., I've gone through it, but it's changing. Every uh, year it changes. For example, up until last year, the um, UC essays uh, were two only, and 500 words each is what we kind of recommended our students, and now it's eight of them, and you get to do four, and then the 350 words each. So one of the things was going through it as a parent, and then figuring out the need. There's, there, there's a huge need for this kind of service, because the students that are all different types of students, high achieving students, uh, A students, B students, C students, it really doesn't matter. But what matters is that they're overwhelmed with trying to keep up the good grades, trying to uh, pack in more APs, um, and then now you've got this process where they are doing the actual applications. They are um, getting ready for interviews, they are um, working on essays, and so the idea of this is to alleviate that stress from the student and the parent and be that cheerleader that guides them on and be that helping hand that's going to help them through this process. So how would, what would you say separates CPC or what we do from another company that's similar? Um, I've not seen a company that is within our Central Valley that does all the services that we do. We do have companies like um, Kaplan and Princeton Review and Veritas that do test prep. We have companies that maybe help students only in um, BAMD programs. And uh, we may have companies that help with interview process. But what we do is it's definitely a one-stop shop. Mm -hmm. uh, when we have a family and a student that comes into us, we take care of everything from testing to essays to applications to the research for the applications um, to, you know, following them all the way until they finish their first year of college successfully. So we do stay with them for those many years. So I haven't seen a company that would invest that much um, with, you know, in a student and a family. How do you keep the company or the services that we provide, how do you keep it personable so it doesn't feel like everybody's getting the same treatment and everybody feels like they're getting a tailored treatment to themselves? Correct, yes. Yeah, so without a family feeling that this is a, a cookie cutter type of process, uh, when each student comes, we, once we've identified their major, Mm -hmm. Then we're going to tailor everything that they're going to do in the next four years based on that major. Um, when we uh, do the ACT or SATs, we don't have a huge classroom style. We have four students max, and so our instructors are able to give that personalized one-on-one -on -one type of service to them. 
when I meet the students, I don't meet them in a group. I meet them individually. So I can address any of the needs of the parents and I can work with the student. When we do essays, we don't uh, meet everybody in a group and say, okay, everyone's going to do essay number one. Uh, essays are very personal. I mean, that is the personal story of the student. And so we make sure that the essays are corrected, you know, with only the essay instructors, uh, myself and the student only, and maybe we want another eye to look at it as well. So every meeting with the student or the parent is personalized where that time is only theirs and ours. You mentioned earlier as well um, that you provide services uh, like internships mm -hmm. and stuff at this uh, stuff in the same categories. Correct. Would you be able to give us more information on that? Like, what kind of internships are available mm -hmm. to students? We what kind uh, of programs? we are, that sounds that's actually one of the important criteria, uh, and I'm glad that you asked about that because one of the things that we like to do is make sure students have some shadowing, um, and we will align them up with. Um, physicians or care facilities. Um, sometimes we have engineering students and we know engineering uh, parents or we know engineering firms and so we would maybe want them to um, shadow and get experience of that. Um, we are associated with uh, St. Agnes Hospital as well as the Chaffee Zoo, uh, Horizon Care Facility and um, Sunrise or um, Cedar Brook and so we will reach out to our local um, businesses and provide that shadowing or internship experience. Aside from that, because that's local, um, we are nominators for the NYLF, which is a National Youth Leadership Forum, and uh, our students, or Rosetta, or the EPIC program, or the um, uh, National Student Leadership Conference and these are programs where students are exposed to um, a college campus for six, eight, ten days and they're exposed to that field that they have an interest in. Sometimes our career assessment will expose that uh, field of careers of interest within that student and then the next step is to kind of give them that hands-on experience. Well, as you've been talked about it earlier, but in terms of of um, students and, and and all that, how do you help identify? Let's say a student comes in and says, "I don't know what I want. I don't know what school I want." Yeah. How do you help them? Um, we every year uh, that I have uh, been in college prep, we learn from the past year, um, and we try to. Uh, enhance our services. So one of the things that we added this year is a survey. And so the survey kind of funnels through, uh, is a student looking for a large campus, a small campus, rural, uh, um, rural or urban, or um, are they looking for in-state, out-of-state, um, cost of the campus, do they want it um, um, affiliated with any religious preference? Once we have a survey, uh, then we are able to um, start getting, and then the major. So there's a couple of different criteria that we look at before we come up with a list of schools. And then sometimes there's spring break. Um, there is Christmas. There is all these uh, times where the student now can physically see the campus. And that makes a big difference because we've had students that, have been accepted to say Berkeley and then as well as Albany in New York and so then when they physically see the campus they cannot picture themselves at this type of environment versus you know California and one last question how would you how can how do when parents come to your students know that they can trust you as a as a as a company or the company as a whole um, one of the things that that would really entail trust would be the fact that I'm a mother of four. Um, can I do a little shout out to <laughs> Hannah and Isha and Anika and Jivika? Uh, and then um, as a mother, as a parent, um, as uh, an educator, 
um, it's really embedded in our practice to give that type of sincere um, service. And um, what I tell my, my parents and my students is the way I treat my own daughters is the way I'm going to treat your child. And they've seen that in, in the entire process. Um, if you read the, the reviews, um, they're honest reviews from parents and from students saying that this process really helped them. Um, my team of, of colleagues um, have the same goal. And when you have that vision and you have that mission to really help students feel successful and be successful, um, they can see it. You know, it's, it's like when a little kid knows when you're not telling the truth or, you know, it's, I, I think the student and the parents know when you're not telling the truth. And so we're, our hope is that um, they can see that through and through. Well, with all the questions that got answered, I hope that audience at home learned a little bit more about P CPC and our boss, RV as a whole. <laughs> Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Hi, today we're here with Jamie Ignudian, to, um, who's a parent from CPC, and she just uh, has a son who just got into Cal Poly Engineering, and she was, um, it's wonderful that she's here with us today to give a parent's perspective on how, what CPC does and how it helps everyone. So hi, Jamie, hi. welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Thank you well, for glad being to be here. here. And so, um, first of all, so what were the concerns you had? and um, like how did you find out about CPC and how did you we found out about CPC through um, uh, a relative um, who would use the service and um, for their child and who highly recommended it and then as we were going through the program um, ended up meeting some people that I've actually worked with or have known who are also um, using the program and just heard nothing but um, excellent reviews and knew it was a very valuable service and mm -hmm. we were really happy with the results obviously so right so um, what was the major like um, goal when you came in with your son we, we mainly wanted to identify which colleges or universities would be um, a good fit for him um, both academically and socially in the, both the size of the campus um, the makeup of the number of students um, in his major and find a, an institution which wasn't just uh, outstanding academically but also would prepare him uh, very well for starting his career um, in the real world mm -hmm. and finding a place where he would be comfortable uh, no, but also knowing that he'd have to work very hard while he was there. Right, and he already knew that he wanted to be an engineer? Yes. When he, okay. And then he also did some of the shadowing, as Mrs. Cashel mentioned. Um, he had started that last year. He had uh, shadowed a civil engineer, and then in the meantime had spoken to some uh, mechanical engineers, which is mm -hmm. what he decided to go into. Um, and they helped facilitate that, getting them into the workplace and making contacts and, mm -hmm. and speaking to students that were already at the college right and what was like the most overwhelming thing that you were going through that made you want to get um, you know CPC it, it would be I would say the application process um, the CPC has so much information and they're they're right on top of the whole process and not just identifying schools um, what their individual departments look like what their curriculum was like but actually navigating the admissions process was something that I don't think we would be able to success do nearly as successfully on our own um, and you know as an example um, going through CPC um, my son and his peers did not go through the program. Most of them are um, going to go to university locally. Mm -hmm. um, but going through CPC opened up a, you know, a lot of options to different schools that right. he hadn't even thought of um, right. and helped him uh, get through the whole process. So the application process is, is, and if you do the financial aid processing, that's 
very difficult to. So right. they made that effortless for mm -hmm. us. So right. And what were your three like biggest concerns you had as a parent regarding everything? Really wanted to find a school that he would fit into very well, um, where he would work hard uh, but feel comfortable at. Right. Um, something with a fairly low faculty to student ratio. Something that offered the opportunities again. Um, in the workplace where you can do internships and co-ops mm -hmm. and um, things like that that would uh, prepare him, make him more competitive and prepare him for, um, you know, getting, starting right. his career. Right. And as a, as a mom, you kind of would like to find something where your child's not all the way across the country unless it's something they absolutely want. So right, definitely. That, and that um, as, an as a parent, do you feel that CPC addressed all those issues? Oh yeah. They, in a timely and organized manner? Yeah, they made everything so easy for us. They did basically most of the work and um, my son had to do a lot of you know the online process, but um, they not only met our expectations, but exceeded them. Um, by making everything very personalized. Right, right. So it's individualized to the student and the family. Um, so they take the time to get to know your student, what their strengths and weaknesses are, um, and optimize that. Right. And help them find the right match that would be good for them or give them little hints of things mm -hmm. that would help them get into a school that they were right. really interested in. Right, and as a parent, um, like I started working with CPC just three months ago, but as a parent, I can say that things have really changed. Do you also feel that same way? Like when we went to college, oh, it's, things are just more complicated. It's completely different. It's not just if you get good grades and you do some extracurricular that you'll, you'll get into a good school. Things right. are so competitive and kids have such high, uh, GPAs and they're so well-rounded um, that it's it's very competitive and um, with budgets being what they are some classes get cut some classes you right. know, it's more difficult to get into individual schools within a campus and um, they help address those specific needs so right. not just identifying a school but specific programs what the requirements would be and um, it's Mm -hmm. a whole different world than when we went to college right so and um i have like an older daughter in college and since started working at cpc and working with an rv i really realized what um that um it's not just what you do it's how you pre represent it mm -hmm. and um even though you can have very strong academically but you if you're lacking in something else and if you're or vice versa that you're strong extracurricularly but not academically all those things like make a difference and when you have RV and CPC working with you and presenting your application together, I think that makes a big difference. Do you agree? Yes, I definitely agree um, because uh, she knows the ins and outs of a lot of individual universities and kind of what, what they're looking for, right. perhaps in an application or an essay. Um, I think that was another big help was um, assistance with editing the essays. Right, um, it right. was all the students' ideas. Um, but kind of help fine tune right. some of that. Because um, engineering is a very competitive major. So that's amazing that he was able to get into Cal Poly, which is a renowned school for engineering. Right. So. so we're very pleased with the outcome and I'm very proud of my son. Right. And then, um, so what do you think is the best, um, best benefit of this whole thing? Um, well, the, the end result of uh, getting into school is what we initially were looking for but it's not just that they follow you all the way through your right. academic career um, so it's not just undergrad but through grad school or like I said if you're going to get an um, internship or something like that uh, they will follow you through answer your questions they make it personalized they're readily available um, and so it was a you felt very, very comfortable with them right. and felt that Taking care if, of. if we got lost or stuck that, right. that they had the experience and the knowledge and the communication skills um, and the actual personal attentiveness. They really are invested in your, your child and, and right. the family's goals as a whole and um, to figure out what's feasible and right. what they can achieve for and then also gave them a set point for elevating their mm -hmm. expectations. Right. Um, so that if they 
didn't think they could get into a particular school. They said, yes, you can if you try right, you know, right. um, a little extra here or a little extra there or focus on something else. Right. So it was an outstanding experience I think everyone would benefit from. Right. And like um, RV always says, like once a CP student, CPC student, always a CPC student. So, um, you know, even during college, right. like whenever you need advice, she will be more than right. welcome and the whole team. You know, we're readily available. Right, and so. that really appealed to us because right. it wasn't, I mean, the hardest part was getting into into school, but um, also the follow-through afterwards and um, right. contacts and uh, networking and just the advice that they can pass along as, right. the, as the students mature because they're going to be changing, mm -hmm. you know, as they go through their programs. Right, and right. So. And then I think um, with RV being a mother of college students herself, she really understands what we parents go right, through. Right, exactly. And, and as you mentioned, nowadays, because it, it is a completely different process than it was 20, 30 years ago. Right. So you need a little bit of an extra edge and uh, extra assistance just right. to optimize um, everything yes. that's available to you so that you fully utilize your resources and it's from someone who's knowledgeable right. where as a parent you're just Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's almost too many options, so you almost right. don't know where to start. And it helps you kind of narrow it down. And sometimes um, even the children, sometimes they're confused, mm -hmm. and even they're tired of listening to mom and dad. Right. Where when RV like, has a consultation with them, she'll actually make them feel really comfortable and then address, like, what are your passions? And they, have, you know, they can kind of define what's your interest right. and where's your strong strength. Right. and weakness and kind of what fits your child. Right, exactly. Right. So they spend a lot of time getting to know your child and then listening to them and um, providing a, a professional perspective and a perspective as a parent, and um, which is different than the child's own parents. So right. they're getting input from someone that really knows what they're talking about rather right, than a right. parent who just says, oh, it would be nice if you, you mm -hmm. know, went to a school close to home or something like right. that. They can point out other options because you as a parent you just feel like you're in kind of like um t being taken care of from a professional right where they know like what's kind of like the best route right. to get to the career right. your child wants right yeah from someone who's reliable and knowledgeable and so you know they uh, my son you know put a lot of faith into um the process and the right. program and the people that were involved and it, it all turned out great Okay, great. And would you um, recommend this uh, for any uh, other parents out there versus like not getting any kind of um, help? Would you strongly suggest like definitely, you know, I would, go with CPC? I too? would definitely recommend CPC. There's other tutoring programs and review programs. It's a whole, that's a whole different setting. This actually um, follows your student from beginning to end, gets to know them personally, um, and helps them a great deal and um, you could see the end result uh, compared to someone who's not getting that extra help right it helps them it helps the students achieve getting into their dream schools or their ideal schools right and so it's it's definitely worth the investment okay okay so thank you so much Jamie thanks and once again college prep consultants and RV um, always says that it's the one-stop shop and um, as Jamie would say, and as also as a parent working there now, it is really a one-stop shop where you get every kind of help you could think of, and you know that your child is well taken care of and has assistance in basically every question they could come up with, like scholarships, essays, ACT, SAT, any kind of tutoring you need, um, just to have a successful process as well as a successful result. So thank you. Jamie, so much for taking oh, your time and congratulations once here. again. Thank you. For, uh, and good luck to um, your son thank who's you. going to engineering at Cal Poly. Thank you. Thanks. Hello, my name is Kyron. I'm back for a second interview with a student this time named Aisha. She's currently going to UC Santa Cruz for film and digital media. So, Aisha. Why did you choose a consultant? Uh, my parents and I weren't really um, super sure of how the college process would be. And uh, as everyone has been saying, it's been getting really competitive in these past couple of years. And you really have to do so much to make yourself stand out. And I felt as though, well, my parents and I both felt that being with a consultant would be the best choice because not only would they like 
help you in terms of what you're supposed to do for the application. They would also keep you on track for what you're already doing in high school. And it was just something that we felt would be really helpful for the one and a half years that I've been with RV so far. What would you say was your biggest concern or series of concerns that you had before you came to us or to RV? I think one of my biggest concerns, like personally, was just how useful would it be to have someone else, you know, kind of telling you what you're supposed to be doing and how you should be doing it because um, I didn't really want a third parent telling me <laughs> what I was supposed to be doing. Um, but it was, it was good. I, I'm glad I still went because it ended up being really beneficial and any worry that I had before I went was, was gone. So how would you say the process as a whole and the timeline that we structure for you, how, how would you say that that was for you? It was good. I think it was really nice to have to start when I did. I started uh, April of my junior year of high school, and um, it was nice because RV was like, "Okay, you're coming at a good time where I can tell you, you know, how you should be studying for your ACTs, how you should be uh, spending your summers, what you should be doing." And uh, it was really good for even right before the college process started to have someone kind of guiding you along the way of what you should be doing and not like just sitting around and wasting your time before you're supposed to do like one of the biggest applications that someone will probably do in their lifetime. So I think the process was really nice and when it got to the actual application process having someone who would tell you you know how your essays are going, what you could fix, what um, basically what you were how to present your best self to colleges, it was really nice and I think the process was really helpful. What would you say about the internships that we aligned you with? Uh, we mentioned when I was interviewing RV that we offer internships and programs mm -hmm. for you to do. How would you say those were? They were really fun. I had a really good time. I went to NSLC the summer before my senior year and I went to North went Northwestern University and it was really nice and I made a lot of friends that I still talk to now and keep in contact with uh, through college and it was really nice and it was really helpful because it did give you a lot of perspective into what it's like to be in any kind of field because I did a leadership one so it was more of a broad subject that really has kind of come in handy when it comes to um, doing a lot of things in college and speaking and public speaking things like that so I think the internship that I did was really good and I'm glad I did it so one of the one of the main things we do when we have students is we set up meetings with them every week or month whatever year you're in how would you say that, that were those insightful did they help you they did help me they were really nice they kept me on track during the school year uh, both the end of my um, junior year and throughout senior year uh, and it was really nice that whenever I went someone was telling me like okay what you're doing is right like you're not you know wasting your time and it was really helpful and I'm really glad that she was able to help me throughout my uh, since April of junior year until like even now. So you're saying all these nice things about CPC so <laughs> would you recommend us and why would you do that? I would definitely recommend CPC. It was really helpful and it really made me feel more secure in um, you know all the choices that I made leading up to choosing my college and uh, where I was applying um, because I really came into this super unsure mm -hmm. of where I wanted to go and what I wanted to do and it was really nice to have someone who is an outside perspective kind of tell me how I should be or not how I should be or or like kind of show me the light of where I wanted to be and I'm really glad that I joined CBC and I feel like it's really helpful. So after going through us where did you end up? Did you end up where you wanted to be? Are you happy? I'm really happy. I'm at University of California at Santa Cruz. Uh, I'm doing a film and digital media major with a history of art and visual culture minor. And it's it's really cool to be at a really at a school like that because I hadn't uh, considered it to the extent that I had until I got accepted. Um, and RV really told me how I could be my best self there and how much I would really enjoy it and it was really cool because it wasn't something that I had originally considered and when she had talked to me about it and really helped me find a school I realized this is the school that I should be at and it was really nice. I'm really happy there. How would you compare yourself from before coming to CPC to when you left? Would you say you've matured a lot, you've grown because of the company or? I think so. I was definitely not as organized as I am now because <laughs> uh, Arby really keeps you on track when you're with her so it's really nice to um, kind of look back and be like, you know, if I didn't have the service, I don't think I'd be at the college I am now.
So you think we set you up for college? You think that as a as going through our process, you think that you're better as a college student? You're more prepared for the road ahead. I do. I think that I'm. Uh, this first year has been not as difficult of a transition as it would have been if I didn't have CPC. So overall satisfaction, what would you give us? Like a in-person review, what would you do? I'd say it's a pretty good. I'd say it's a good service. Ten out of ten. <laughs> <laughs> well. Uh, I don't have any more questions for Aisha. So with that, we'll close this out. And thank you, Aisha, for coming here and yeah, giving us an inside perspective from a student standpoint. Of course. Central Valley Talk. Hi everyone, this is RV Kashal, um, owner and CEO of a College Prep Consultants, and today we have a guest, and his name is Kyron Vasquez. He is the uh, College Prep Consultants ACT instructor, one and of one of them, yes, and many other uh, hats that he uh, puts on. So today we'll be asking Kyron specific questions about the testing, the ACT and the SAT, and what does it all uh, involve. So Kyron, thank you so much for being here. I know, they're probably tired of seeing me, but. <laughs> so one of the questions that I, I really wanted to ask you was, um, a lot of people will say um, that they're gonna take both tests. Um, what's your advice on that first? Don't do it. If you're going to take a test, make sure you take only one. Um, you know, the SAT and ACT are both two different tests. Right. ACT is more curriculum based, mm -hmm. whereas it's it's more what they learn in school. Right. So in school, you learn to take a test and to finish it. And with the ACT, it's not designed to be finished. Okay. But like I said, it is more structured. So it, it's it's more of you know what you're going to learn okay. or what you need to learn, and you study for it. Okay. The SAT is more. It's, it's not as structured, so it, it bounces from subject to subject. So in the beginning, it might be math, and mm -hmm. then you go to English, and then you go back to math. Mm -hmm. Whereas SAT, or ACT would be math, English, science, all the time. Okay. So the SAT is like all over the place, yeah. right? So I think that's what sometimes students are not used to. They're, they're used to what you, as you mentioned, um, in their high school, they're used to that structure. Um, so my other question would, would be, um, do you, what do you think about subject tests? Because I know that the SAT has a second portion that they call SAT2, and those are subject tests. So would you recommend subject tests, and for whom? Subject tests, we do recommend them as a company. Those are really, really important if you're trying to go into a medical field or engineering field or any type of field that's highly competitive. Okay. However, a lot of people don't know that you can take subject tests while you take the ACT as well. Okay. That's a, a lot of people don't understand that, but SATs, subject tests are, are really helpful. And even if you're not doing a really competitive major, let's say you're doing an English major, mm -hmm. subject tests will help push you in that edge to give you that competitive edge. And that is why we recommend them to take them. We usually recommend two, okay. one to two, and three is if you really want to be, but usually we keep sure. them at two because they're, they're pretty tough. Yeah. Um, and, and that's, I think that's the key, right? To be, be more competitive and to add that little bit of sprinkle or that dust on your college application. Um, so my other question is that should you take the test uh, with or without the writing option? I know when students register, um, you know, you'll, you'll, you'll get a text or a call saying that, should I go ahead and take it with writing or without writing? We recommend them to take it with writing okay. only because there's certain schools that do promote the writing and there's other schools that don't take the writing. Okay. But just to be safe, if you take the writing, yeah. you basically have guaranteed access to all the schools, okay. whether so they have covered, it or not. So you exactly. covered yourself by taking and then it with the writing. If a test or if a school doesn't take the writing, mm -hmm. it's showing initiative and that puts you in the competitive edge. Even if they don't necessarily look at the essay, it shows that you decided to take an option that's yeah. not usually recommended. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, so th maybe one of the other questions is sometimes students want to take this test early on, like an eighth grader wants to take it or, you know, or, or ninth graders or tenth graders. When is a, when is a good time to, to take these tests? Usually it would be your junior year because by then that's when you have most of the material that's going to be covered. 
from the maths or the English. I know a lot of people take it the PSAT in sophomore year and then they end up taking the SAT later, which isn't a bad idea. Correct. The only problem is that you don't get all the material that would be covered up into your junior year. Got it. You're right. Because like sometimes in high school you haven't um, had Algebra 2 yet exactly. or you haven't had a little bit of trig, which is what's on the test, right? So you just want to make sure you have that knowledge base before you take the test. So it, it can um, vary with based on the high s the student's high school transcript then exactly right? yeah okay um, so my other question is uh, what do you what do you consider a good score so you know I I want to go to Princeton but then uh, I may change my mind and I want to go to Cal Poly so what's a good score well for the SAT a competitive score uh, we would say would be a 1250 and the SAT would be a 27 or higher, okay. or an, but the SAT would be a 1250 or higher, mm -hmm. and that puts you in the competitive advantage. Okay. That's when schools look at you and they're like, this is the student that we want. Correct, okay. And, and that's just the starting base exactly. because um, you definitely don't want to be lower than that, um, but, um, and that's one of the criteria that the colleges mm -hmm. look for. So schools like Princeton or Harvard, they may be in, in the 33s and 34s, but I think some schools show a range, right? Yeah, exactly. Okay. They'll, they'll have a range that'll say your SAT score could be from 1250 to 14, or 1250 to 1400, and another school will okay. say 27 to 31 is where you'll be accepted. Got it. Okay, that makes sense. Um, so my other question is, I know kids have a lot of pressure with um, SATs and ACTs and trying to take them, and then they're in their junior year or senior year, and they are... Um, taking their college classes or they're taking AP classes and AP test is coming up. How do you, um, uh, how important really is the score of the ACT and SAT? The, the SAT and ACT scores are around 30 to 40 percent uh, weighted towards the whole college application process. Okay. That includes things like shadowing, extracurricular activities, your grades, okay. the whole package. But 30, 30 to 40 percent is what we would say is... the is weight for the, exactly. these tests. Okay, so they are very important tests. Um, you know, even though, you know, there are tests. How much time do you think that they need? student needs to study before the test? Like uh, a week before? I would say a, a full month. A full a month, month. A month to two. Okay. And then that is the service that you provide, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. So how many hours do you, do you provide of, of service before the test? 30 hours a month. Uh, it used to be 25, but we recently raised it up to 30. Okay. Is there any, is there any uh, increased cost with, with raising that for five more hours? No, we kept okay. the price the same. Uh, okay. We do offer individual tutoring. Okay. That can happen if a student's not getting the score they want. We can try to do indiv individual tutoring to help boost the score. Mm -hmm. So if I wanted to sign up my daughter for a class, um, um, an ACT, SAT class, but I don't know which test, what, what would be... Uh, the first step? What, what would be the process of her getting into your class? Well, we offer a diagnostic, and that diagnostic is a full-length SAT or AC ACT test, depending on which one you, you opted for. Okay. And once you get that back, it gives you a score. So okay. it'll, let's say, for example, your score would be a 1,200 on the SAT, okay. and then your score would be a 27 on the ACT. Obviously, on there, you're scoring better on the ACT than you are the SAT. Okay. But the student still has a, the freedom to choose whether they want to take the SAT or ACT based on how they felt when they were taking it, if they felt they had enough information about okay. which either test. Okay. And then from there, we continue to move forward. So we find their strengths and weaknesses on both tests. Oh, and we that's compare, very We compare good. the scores. Yeah. So a diagnostics is, is really good because I know sometimes when students take the PSAT or the PACT, um, sometimes that data isn't enough because exactly. they took it a year ago or you know so you guys run uh, a full diagnostics full three four hours of the ACT and then a full uh, you know three hours of the SAT and then you compare the results um, from that point on say you you told my daughter that the ACT was a better test for her then her next step would be what to sign up for a class yeah okay they could sign up for a class or she would be able to sign up for a class and then in that class it's it's individualized so there's the max four students Okay. And in there, you, you, we assign homework. Um, we tell them, you know, to do the homework and come back. And then the next day, we ask them, well, you know, did you have problems? Mm -hmm. What did you need? What do you need help with? And then, if, for example, somebody says, 
I need help on this math problem. Well, then I work it out on a board okay. and I try to help them learn how to do it. And then I also tell them, teach them the ins and outs. For example, the science test really isn't that much of a science test on the That's SAT. That's scary, yeah. Kids the, think, yeah. oh my gosh, I got to learn a whole science component. Exactly. But a lot of students are afraid of the science per portion of the ACT, but uh, it's mostly just another reading passage. Okay. And we try to teach them, you know, Oof, the ins that and outs. Yeah, we try okay. to teach them the ins and outs yeah. of, of that science section and, and the ins and outs of the SAT or ACT. Okay. Um, so after the class, um, say she goes and takes the test and she doesn't do so well, um, what, what, what can I do with her then? Well, we usually recommend students to take the test if they didn't do well the first time, a maximum of two to three times. Okay. After that, it, it becomes too many. Okay. But if that happens, they can always opt to do, or they wouldn't have to do another class. They could just do individualized tutoring. Okay. So whatever areas. area she's, she's exactly. not doing so, so well. If she needed more help in math, then she could ask one of us, and then we could tutor her privately for okay. that math section or that English section or that science that's section. That's really good. That's what you meant by customize, and exactly. that's you know the kind of service that you, you provide. Um, so is there anything that you would like our viewers to know about either one of the tests or anything about the service that you provide? Well, as I mentioned earlier, the, t the two tests are, the tests are two different types of things. So if you're more into structured and if this is what I learned in school type of thing, then I would promote the, the ACT. Okay. But if you feel like, you know, that you're kind of a person that can just pretty much do whatever and you don't care about structure and that doesn't throw you off, then I would promote the SAT to you. Okay. But at the same time, it's completely different. I would, I would advise to take a diagnostics before you even come in. Even if you have taken the PSAT and the PACT mm -hmm. and you're still leaning towards one or the other, a diagnostic is going to help you figure out because that's an actual full length test. That makes and sense. And you might take the PSAT and say, oh, this is the test that I like. But then when you actually take the full length SAT test, you're like, this is what I don't want to do anymore. It's different, yes. Um, I know in the past that the SAT uh, used to have a, a quarter of a point uh, taken away if you yeah. guessed. So is that is that still true now? No, the SAT actually removed that. So there is okay. no penalty. There is no penalty for guessing or, or uh, getting a wrong answer. That's good. That is excellent. So they're kind of being a little bit similar to the ACT. Yeah, they're but they're trying but to not quite. Yeah, they're okay. trying to structure them. They're trying to get more structured like the ACT, but they're still trying to remain different from the okay. ACT. And do you know how many times you offer that class? I know the tests are you know both ACT and SAT are. Uh, almost every month or every other month so that's a lot of classes so do you have you come up with some sort of schedule or how many times you guys would offer yeah, we, classes? We do make a master calendar and we honestly do a test or a practice session before every test. Okay. So let, if there was a test in June we would have a class May for that whole month to study for that okay. test in June Okay. and then one in December we'd have a test in November to study for that whole that whole test. That is excellent. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Kyren, for, for coming here and giving us a little bit more insight on the ACT and the SAT. Um, and uh, we hope your classes <laughs> fill up and uh, you seem like a really good instructor who knows what he's talking about. So try. Thank you, Kyren. Thank you for having thank me. You. Central Valley Talk. Talk. Talk.